Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Fahey. Joining me, as ever, is the sensei of hyperversion. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 I, I, th- I believe you're the originator of uh, the whole high functioning pervert yeah, uh, yeah. lifestyle. That's correct, Aaron uh, Joseph Pita. That's me, Aaron Joseph Pita. You can go to my website. I won't tell it to you right now, but you can go to it and uh, you can subscribe. I'm taking course and you know online e immersion course. Ooh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It's like a float tank, but in uh, your body. Yeah, yes. and it's yeah. mostly piss yeah well. right and uh Body a, as always joining us uh the master of the nocturnal emission mr matt Prusso. <laughs> oh yes yeah. that's great uh that's great. i um i want to say up top we just finished recording a uh, bleak and review matt's mm-hmm. other podcast yeah wonderful and uh we had a great time me and aaron were uh, stupid and offensive and mm-hmm. idiotic yeah uh and that and was it, before we did characters <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's right uh that was a really good time uh please check that out that will be out by the time this episode comes out yes yeah, so uh, review they can review part of the Unpops network. network. Yes, yes. And um, I, uh, by the time this comes out, I, I will be back from Florida going for a few days Ooh. over my birthday. We should celebrate when I come back if yes. you want to. I would to. love to. Um, we uh, we want to uh, send a special shout out to Matt. You, you made us the, the flagship podcast of a cafe, is that right? Yeah, yeah. We're the uh, official podcast of Ray Ray's Cafe, and they're the official cafe. Of, of the podcast, of the podcast. Right. Ray Ray's wow. East Hampton, Massachusetts. Uh, Kevin and Spencer, uh, great people, great mm-hmm. food. Try the egg rolls. Huh, nice. Get yourself an egg roll. <laughs> there, we go. there was a, a guy that would uh spray paint around my neighborhood when I lived in downtown Fort Myers. Uh, he would just like write in blue spray paint Ray Ray in blue, mm. <laughs> and then if you had green spray paint, etc. You know oh, what I mean? Okay, okay. It was very, very interesting. Mm. Uh, and he would steal people's bikes. Uh, <laughs> bikes! Yeah, yeah. Um, what else do we have to, to, to say up front? We wanted to, uh, to, uh, what do we want I to think say? that's it. Well, Ray, Ray Ray's. Yeah, we still are asking everybody to please post something about the show that you love. You know, Yes, if, it, you, oh. take a second. Mm-hmm. Don't just click share, okay? Right. Don't just click retweet. Or repo, whatever. Just take a second, compose your thoughts of get your shit together. Definitely get your shit together. And then smear it (laughs) on a post. Stealthily. Right. And just share one of your favorite moments, your favorite episodes of the show. Right. With a link. Yeah. Share it on your social media, probably Instagram. Yeah. But Facebook will work. Whatever you want, whatever, whatever you, you like. like, but just take you know, make it, it, it. We would appreciate it because people tend to uh, they'll pay attention if you really mean something. Yes, and, and we find that uh, a little personal touch yeah. goes a long way. Trying to grow the show in the new year, we uh, yeah. we really love the show. You know, we do we do two a week basically for you know like the the Patreon and and the regular episodes, and we um, we we never run out of shit to talk about so it's like we're just like overly uh in love with doing this show and we just want uh it to become more kind of uh self-sustaining yeah so if you guys can help us do that we would really appreciate it and uh patreon coming out this week oh wonderful oh it's filth it's yeah the patreon delicious ex- filth the, the filth. patreon exclusive this week uh deals with a couple of characters that um had uh, uh compulsions just, uh, <laughs> they had um like a uh, life you know like uh or a death fearing hunger uh all the time to the point that they were just eating garbage anything anybody would offer them mm. um true true freaks uh and and uh around the time of you know the the french revolution mm-hmm. and it's a uh, it's an amazing story it's completely ridiculous and over the top and we had a lot of fun doing that um that is a profile that you can only get if you subscribe to the patreon so please uh, do that. Uh, we're almost to a thousand dollars. Aaron is getting ready to take his shirt off. I'm so and... fucking close. To yeah. Clothes off too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really, really exciting time. Yes. It's a very exciting time. Very exciting time. And uh, Matt, newly back. Yes. From the state of Massachusetts. Yes. New England. And you have a little profile for Aaron and I to enjoy. Yes. This is one. Mm. Uh, I was at the Raven Bookstore in Northampton, Massachusetts, and they have a New England section. And uh, I was looking through. I was like, oh, you know. Find something interesting. And then I saw this book 
from Mark L. Songini, New England's most intriguing gangsters, rascals, rogues, and thieves. Mm -hmm. And I, I read through it. And, you know, there's one guy who, who uh, isn't as interesting as who I'm going to profile, but I just want to say it has great nuggets in it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there was uh, one of the characters, his dad died when he was young. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened is uh, his dad was a workman, you know, a laborer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some guy bet him that he couldn't pick up a 400-pound stone yes. and put it on the back of a cart. Mm -hmm. And then he did, and then immediately went into shock and died two days later. Wow. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Some yeah. really good stuff. Don't tell him what he can't do. <laughs> right. He didn't bet him that he wouldn't die. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Did he get the money? No, it was just, it was one of those, I bet oh. you can't. Yeah. Uh, it was for honor. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. got that honor. It's a great death. Yikes. Uh, but that's not the story. I want to talk about the Witcher Wall Street and their family and uh, one of the greatest misers in Massachusetts history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love a miser. Oh, mm -hmm. a Scrooge mm -hmm. McDucky. And the, the way the family worked. And uh, so it, her story begins 1834, New Bedford, Massachusetts. She was born, uh, uh, she would become known as Hetty, mm. H-E-T-T-Y. And uh, uh, that was short for Harriet, mm. Mm. as you do. Sure. And uh, New Bedford, Mass. Central, it was peak whaling time mm. uh, in Massachusetts, 1834. Tons of money in it. And her mother, uh, Abby Holland, was, uh, was part of the richest whaling family, basically at the time, maybe even in the history of the United States. Jesus. Uh, Isaac Holland Jr. and company. Uh, their fortune began in 1624 when they bought a black cow. Huh. Because I guess that's how you start a fortune back then. Buying a black cow. Buying a black cow. Hmm. What does that do? Sounds I don't like, know. Sounds I guess... like you're spending money. <laughs> huh. uh, well, come see it, I guess. Ah, oh, check out this black cow. Look at this black cow, a dollar. Give me a dollar. Mm -hmm. Back then, that's a fortune. Right. <laughs> uh, they, by 1800, the Howlands had 35 whaling ships. Each ship would net $75,000 a trip. In today's money, that's about $1.5 million. Wow. wow. Just cacting, catching all that whale sperm. Catching all that whale sperm. And sperm not being their actual nut. It's right, It's actually right. a fluid that surrounds their brain. But read Moby Dick. It's really good for your hands. There's a whole chapter where he tells you how important the whale sperm is for soft hands. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not actual nut. No. Sadly. Yeah. What the fuck is it? It's a fluid that uh, was, it surrounded like a cavity in their brain and mm -hmm. they think they think that it has something to do with like um, echolocation or, ra or uh, communication through, you know, sound. Crazy. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's what they used for oil and yes. stuff. To make lamps before. Presumably it smelled exactly like jizz. It probably tasted like it too. Oh, who's to say? <laughs> Who is to say? Who is to say? I'll tell, I'll tell the, you. Guy that, the guy that tasted it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were a family of Quakers. And uh, 1834, uh, uh, Hetty was born. Uh, she had some siblings. They all died when they were young, as of course. you do. Yeah. And her father was Edward Mott Robinson. His nickname was Blackhawk. Hmm. That's how uh, everybody called him Blackhawk. Uh, the parents, uh, uh, Hetty's parents, fought a lot. Her mother was sick, so she would spend most of her time with her father. He was a disciplinarian, and uh, sometimes he would punish her by just making her be silent for 24 hours straight. Wow. Just no, no talking. Good. No noise. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. But he was a businessman of the family, and she would follow him around. He was a cheap bastard. He once turned down a, ten, a free 10-cent cigar because he said he usually smoked 4-cent cigars. He didn't want to get addicted. <laughs> wow. Yikes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Too rich for my blood. <laughs> Free? Well, he's got the black cow at home. Can't he splurge a little? <laughs> oh. uh, he, uh, she once said that her, her, my father never uh, told me never to give anyone anything, not even kindness. Good God. It was part of that old Quaker tradition, man was born to suffer. Yeah. You know? yeah so yeah. now we have to fucking suffer. Like Nixon. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Put she... on yourself. <laughs> Cuck it up. She would follow him around while he made his business deals, and uh, she would sit with him when he was reading the paper in the morning, and she said when she, when she was five years old, he, she would sit on his father's lap and, uh, while he read the business news and the stock market options, and uh, then she, she said when he was six, she read them herself. Her eye, hmm. His eyesight was failing, and... Oh, when he, when he was sick. When he, gotcha. Uh, no, when she was uh, six. Oh, when she was six, she, was, she would read to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. At age eight, she opened her first savings account, by age 16, she became the bookkeeper of the family. Good God almighty. Wait, age 13. I'm sorry. Age 13. She's the bookkeeper of the wealthiest family in Massachusetts. Time. 
of the, the sperm fortune. The sperm fortune, right. as mm-hmm. you do. Mm-hmm. So she's six years old telling her dad, ah, Pennzoil's taking a shit. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, we're, we're full of sperm, dad. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got so much sperm, we're overflowing with sperm. <laughs> Tastes delicious. <laughs> you know me, I'm a big sperm head. <laughs> oh. She spent a lot of time uh, living with her mother's father, her grandfather, and uh, he was, you know, Quaker. And uh, but he was uh, one of those, uh, 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 you know, kind of uh, uh, skittish Quaker's. He once put a piano in his house. Whoa! Yeah, you know, we're a black cow no in the time, family. No time for that. Oh, really? That that yeah. would be. Uh... Oh yeah, you can't do that if you're Quaker. Right. Can't be having fun. Music. Right. Yeah. Wow. Get real. Have me some fun. Go on, have me some fun. Predator. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so also when she was 13, so her grandfather also died when she was 13. She said she spent the whole night crying. Um, then counting his money. <laughs> but she was crying because he didn't leave her anything. Jesus! Ah, well, that's respectable for her. Mm-hmm. Fucking motherfucker. <laughs> fucking old fucking bitch, bitch and all I got is a sperm. <laughs> Uh, they sent her off to a fancy school briefly. She didn't do well. She didn't take in, uh, instruction well. Uh, one, uh, one of the stories is they, they gave her some food to eat, and she didn't like the food, so she didn't eat it. And wow. so they gave her the same food the next day. She didn't eat again. Same food the next day. She didn't eat it. Fourth day, she finally ate the now th- four-day-old food. Wow. Oh, they gave her the same, the same food. food. Oh, I thought you meant like the same dish, but they gave her four day old mm-hmm. slop. Yeah. yeah. No, back then they were really hardy. They could take a disease. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All that sperm coat in your stomach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Good echolocation. Yeah. There. Soft hands. She could dance. She could play piano, uh, but she didn't want to be courted. Uh, when, when she had her courting ceremony, she spent the entire time talking to the fathers of the men who came. Mm-hmm. And talking business with them. And, and to save money, she blew out the candles before it was over. So that she could reuse the candles? So she could reuse the candles. Jesus. Wow. Ugh. What a character. Like, I mean, oh my god. Uh, Get yeah. the fuck away from me. Don't court me, motherfucker. <laughs> Who's got my money? <laughs> Who's got my fucking money? <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, pal. Exxon's about to go down. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's she spent the whole time there wheeling a dealage. Don't waste one thought of that sweet white ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) It is the precious liquid. It is. 1860, she's 26. Her mother's die. Her mother dies uh, with no will drawn up. Hetty and her father they fight over who gets what. Jesus. Uh, She gets eight thousand dollars in real estate. Her dad gets the rest of it, which is a lot. Which is a lot. Uh, It was about five million dollars back then. Which wow. is uh, an insane amount of money today. And it's sure. probably like, you know, 300 million today. Wow. Jesus. Uh, 1865, five years later, her uh, father, Blackhawk, dies. She gets all the five million. Yeah, I'm bitch. sorry, it's approximately 80 million today. I wrote it for the next one. Hmm. So 80 million hey, today. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty sweet inheritance. There's no around. inheritance tax uh, back then. Right. She gets it all straight into her bank account. Uh, and then, uh, then uh, uh, there's a little bit of an uh, issue. That same year, her aunt... From the Howland side dies, and uh, she never liked Hetty. Uh, she thought Hetty was kind of prude and annoying, and uh, a little bit of a, a miser. Miser, mm-hmm. as has been demonstrated. Sperm mm-hmm. queen. <laughs> she still left her with a seventy thousand dollar annuity, which is a pretty good payout back mm-hmm. then. Yeah, uh, but Hetty didn't want. She wanted all of it. Oh my uh, god! And so what she did is she sued the rest of the family for the money. And the, uh, the case is called the Howland Will case. It's the, uh, uh, after Lizzie Borden, is the Borden trial is the second biggest trial at the time in the history of Massachusetts. Jesus. Mm. And to fight the case, what she did, Hetty did, is uh, she rewrote the will and then forged her aunt's signature. The Jesus. dead aunt. Yes. Very oh my good. God. I was going to say she dug her up and signed forged something. But... <laughs> yeah. She uh, cut off her hands and put her prints all yeah, over yeah, it. Exactly. That's a great idea. Who's in the fridge? Uh, they brought in all of these uh, signature experts, inclu- including Oliver Wendell Holmes, to uh, to uh, see if the signature was a forgery or not. And uh, Benjamin Pierce was one of them. He determined that she just traced it. Uh-huh. And Benjamin Pierce said the chance that signatures are genuine is one in two point six 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 sextillion. Pretty good, com- pretty good confidence, I would say. Wow. 
Plus, the will spells smells like cum. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes I, like it too. Not that I would know. <laughs> it's, huh? Now, the case had not been dismissed yet, but her cousins then threatened to counter sue uh, her for perjury. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, in this moment when she heard that, she ran into a storeroom and she hid out there for four days eating crackers and raw eggs. They're free. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> After this, she would never trust her cousins anytime she was with them and they offered her food. She wouldn't eat it. Oh, my God. They should not trust her. Right. That's the, that's the thing. I don't trust you people. Yeah, what? Much sperm in the brain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's a fluid surrounding the brain. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it went. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to the brain. That's how she has such a best figure in the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's the only figure in the family. Oh. Uh, 1867, the case has not, it's a, the case will be dismissed in a year. 1867, though, she's 33. She marries he Edward Henry Green. He's the son of a wealthy Vermont fortune. She takes his last name. She becomes Hetty Green. And she made him sign a prenup. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he couldn't take her money. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1868, she's still worried about that perjury. So uh, uh, actually, no, at this time, her cousins are now going to sue her for forgery. So her and Edward flee to London. She has a great time there with her money. She dances with the Prince of Wales. And she likes the guy. Like, she's... It's convenient. Okay. He has a lot of money. He doesn't need hers. Got it. In London, they have two children, Edward Howland Robinson Green and Harriet Sylvia Ann Howland Green, a.k.a. Ned and Hetty. That's also their names. Their names. Wow. While she's there... Well, she you don't want to pay for another name. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, so right. Yeah. You got a perfectly good name here. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with this? Uh, it, during that time, she starts buying up U.S. greenbacks. These were the legal tender that was uh, issued by the United States during the Civil War. And uh, the U.S. government issued them. And uh, one of the... They, they weren't trusted because there was a worry the government was going to go under, so they were quite cheap. Mm -hmm. Right. They weren't backed by gold or silver, only the credibility of the government. So right. the government goes under, you lose all your money. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, but they were cheap, so... There you go. Such a good deal. Yeah. Well, she flips them. Uh, and she starts flipping these once this, the North wins, mm -hmm. and she turns it into million dollar, millions of dollars. Uh, she wow. claims she made $1.2 million in one year alone. Oh, my God. In 1868 money. Oh, my God. Jesus. Good business woman. Yeah. 1873, she's uh, late 30s now. The statute of limitations on her fraud case is, is passed, and she returns to the United States. First, they moved to Vermont, uh, Bellows Falls, where Edward's from. Then they moved to New York City, and she starts living in rundown houses in unfurnished rooms. Mm -hmm. Any anytime she had to pay taxes on her residence, she would move to a different state. Oh, wow, God. she had an insane amount of money at this time. Yeah. In order to save money, she would also dress in in black dresses, dark ratty dresses. She she never changed them. If they ever got dirty, she would ask the cleaners to only wash the hems of them, which would get you know dirty from the mud, and oh she would God. sit. In the cleaners while they did it. And her might cuts. steal it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, her dresses got, got so dirty, people said they started to look green instead of black. Where do you think this came from, this attitude? Part Quaker, part her father. Yeah. Part, I don't know, some insane it's, fear? Yeah, like yeah. almost like an OCD kind of thing. Yeah. Like, um, fucking insane. But very funny. Very funny. <laughs> when she was sad, she would go to the bank and open her... <laughs> Just stop there. <laughs> you, know, you already know. Yeah, when yeah. I'm sad, I go to the bank. Head down to the bank and um, I make fun of the poor people in line. <laughs> she would open her security boxes and play with her deposits. Jesus Christ. I just fiddle through I'd them. shove rubies in my twat. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> what? People shove jade eggs up their hooves. Oh, that's a, Is that true? These days. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Huh. Goop. Wow. Fuck you, buying shit from a company named Goop. Goop. Ugh. Yeah. Goop. Gross. That's a yikes. That's a hardcore yikes. I'll stick with the sperm queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sperm queen. Come on, if I do. <laughs> Wiping her ass with greenbacks. <laughs> uh, her, her black outfit is where she got the name The Witch of Wall Street. 
Ah, mm. uh, and, you know, she was a good businesswoman, but, she, you know, obviously the miser, I'm just going to list through a few of the few more ways she was a total miser. Please do. She would make her children wear hand-me-down hand clothes. Mm -hmm. Her son, Ned, uh, would have to line his clothes with newspapers to stay warm. Uh, they, she wouldn't turn on the heat or use hot water. Oh, my God. She once spent half a night looking for a lost two-cent stamp. She would buy, buy broken cookies because they were cheaper. And she, in the morning, she would warm her oatmeal on the radiator. Jesus. Compromise. <laughs> yeah. 1885, her husband uh, went bankrupt, so she kicked him out of the house. There he goes. Uh -huh. See you later, you bum! Mm, yeah. Her, her daughter developed a hammer toe, is when your toes get squished, because uh, her shoes were not, uh, uh, did not fit well. Because right. they were old, they, she wouldn't buy, buy new shoes. And she wouldn't pay for her treatment. Yeah. Oh! When Ned was a kid... Rub uh, some sperm on it. <laughs> he either got hit by a horse cart or he was sledding, and he either dislocated his knee or fractured his leg. Uh, to save on doctor's bills, first she tried to treat it with herself with tobacco leaf bandages and liver pills. And when that didn't work, she then disguised herself and brought him to the free clinic in town. Good God. When they realized who she was, they kicked her out. And and uh, as, as a result of this, uh, the leg never healed uh, correctly. Uh, a couple years later, it would become gangrene. Oh, God. Uh, and when Ed, uh, the husband, discovered it, he finally, he sold the remaining... Money he had, the securities he had to pay to get it amputated. Yeah. Oh my God. I would have shot her. That's insane. Uh, Are you kidding me? I swear to God. What? You got all this fucking, where the, where's the money, Lebowski? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's his leg. Jesus. Yeah. And uh, they uh, took his amputated leg and they buried it in the family plot in Vermont. Mm -hmm. but they didn't like sell it or try and eat it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. three days. Uh, Ned, Ned would grow, he would, he would become a big boy. He'd grow to 6'4 and 300 pounds. Without a leg. Uh-huh. Wow. And, so uh, if he had a leg, he'd be 330? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, uh, I'll get, there'll be more about him Peg? later. Peg? Did he have a prosthesis? He had a cork leg. Ah! A series of cork legs. Right, mm. so he could float down the river. <laughs> Instead of paying for the ferry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by 1885, uh, she's now in her uh, you know, 50s or so. I can't remember. Uh, she starts buying railroad bonds. Mm. The railroads are booming. Yeah. She's converting her money into railroad bombs, bonds and, and real estate. She spends about $17 million on this, and she eventually owns 8,000 pieces of real estate across the country. And she was uh, up there with the Vanderbilts and all of those people, you know, uh, um, when it came to the markets and, and train ownership and... Uh, at one point, uh, Jim Fisk, this other character from Vermont, he tried to corner the gold market, and she realized what was happening, and she made a killing on that, too. Hmm. More than once, New York City asked her for loans to keep the city from going bankrupt. Jesus. Hmm. 1907 panic, when the stock market fell 50% in three weeks. The Knickerbocker Trust Company lost $52 million. When someone told her to take her money out of the bank, she said she already has, stating that the men in the bank were too good-looking to put her money there. Hmm. Wise, very good. And she loaned the city 1.1 million to keep really? going bankrupt. She loaned them, mm -hmm. but, but her son has no leg. Yeah, when, <laughs> right. When... Amazing, amazing. She, she, this lady was not getting dick down. <laughs> no, it was. She often threatened to murder her rivals. Really? If, uh, and she, she would throw fits if they tried to underbid her. Oh my god! Uh, so because of this, she always carried a revolver. She, she was worried they would murder her. When she would sleep in hotels, she would rig the revolver to the door to fire if anyone opened it. Oh my god. That is so good stuff. paranoid. Wow. The only business partner she worked with was her dog, Cutie Dewey. Cutie Dewey. Wow. And what she would do is she would name she would put put him as the, the nominal owner of most of her real estate in order to avoid paying taxes on it. Wow. The dog was one of the uh, Biggest real estate moguls in the world at the time. Wow. Uh, she made one enemy, this man named C.P. Huntington of the Houston and Texas Railroad. Okay. He was the first railroad uh, to make, uh, make it to Dallas. Hey. It had so many accidents on it that it was dubbed the Angel Maker. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> In 1885, it went to receivership, and Huntington asked all of his creditors, he said, just have patience, I'll pay you back. When Eddie heard this, she bought up a 51-mile stretch and foreclosed on him. Oh, wow. And so she went to Ned. She loved her son, except for the leg thing, apparently. Right. 
And he loved her. Mm-hmm. And so she wanted him to take care of this new railroad section. section. But first she had to test him. She wanted to make sure he was re- reliable. Uh, uh, he had been her agent for a few years uh, before that, just like a guy looking out, going out for deals. Uh, a couple years before this, he had been in Chicago, uh, and he, uh, he was hanging up with some businessmen. They, he was 22. They heard he was a virgin, so they sent him to this brothel. One-legged, 300-pound uh-huh. virgin. Got it. And it was there he lost his virginity to a busty redhead named Mabel. Oof. And he fell in love with her, and then she disappeared. Aww. Uh-huh. But uh, if, right after this, he came back to New York and, and uh, Hetty... his mom the whole time. <laughs> right, yeah. Hetty, Hetty, had, uh, this, Hetty had a test for him. The final test was for him to travel to New York City to California to deliver, uh, deliver a package of bonds worth $500,000. He had to carry that in a suitcase the entire time. When he arrived, he opened the package, and it contained canceled insurance policies. Wow. Doesn't trust her own son. Doesn't. God, man, that's brutal. But because of this... This, she, he made it all the way there. So because of this, in 1893, she gave him the railroad stretch, the 51-mile stretch in, uh, in Texas called the Texas Midland Railroad. He was 24 years old. And he, was in, he had so much money. He became immediately the richest man in Terrell, Texas at the time. His first deposit into the bank tripled the bank's resources. Jesus Christ. Wow. And uh, so the bank, they wanted to make sure it was real, so they wired to Hetty. For confirmation that it was him, she replied that he had a cork leg and a mole on his forehead, and they confirmed this. Huh. Yeah, the, the <laughs> cripple with a tumor on his head? <laughs> yeah, that's my boy. Good God. Jeez. And as soon as they confirmed this, they made him the vice president of the bank. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Welcome aboard, yes. sir. Yes. And once the governor of Texas heard that it was him, and they had all this money, he made him an honorary colonel. Hey, what? all right. And for the rest of his life, his nickname would be the Colonel. Oh my God! Six four man, three hundred pounds, no leg, cork leg, cork leg, the richest man in Texas, and a colonel, and a colonel. But he oh was good, God. whoremonger. <laughs> well, he was good at running the railroad. He was very good at running the railroad. He had the first lounge cars, first observation sleeper cars. The observation is usually when they had that little area behind the car where you could stand and watch the world go by. Ah. Uh, there was the first, first of those cars ever in the Southwest. He was the first person to add electric headlights on the locomotives. Hey, hmm. thinker. Uh, Terrell, Texas, though, was a sleepy town. And so uh, when they got an opera house, Ned and a few friends, they rented a room above the opera house. Yeah. And what they would do is they would ship in prostitutes from Dallas and then they would, t- they would take pictures of them fucking them. Wow. Sweet. Other, it, other pictures? I could not find any. Daguerreotypes? Yes, pretty much. They had, to, they had to just it'd be... Uh, they couldn't they... move, yeah. Hold. <laughs> Good God. Oh, the old colonel could maintain an erection for three minutes. Yeah. Motionless. <laughs> the colonel would just bounce on the cork leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's, where's the cork leg? Uh, oh! <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> my word, <laughs> dude! Oh my god! You really are the sperm king. <laughs> <laughs> what a scene, sperm, man! Sperm Colonel, sperm. yeah, Colonel Sperm, dude. It was Colonel Sperm in the observation <laughs> car with the cork leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, ran a train in the train. <laughs> <laughs> now, by sheer coincidence, one of these, one time, one of the, uh, he, he's shipping in these prostitutes. One of them turns out to be a busty redhead named Mabel. <gasps> no. His lost love. Oh. Hadn't seen her for three years. Ooh, Here she comes. Called her time LPM. <laughs> Make I, me know it. I do declare. <laughs> <laughs> and so what he did is he had George Pullman build a specific car. For her, it had three state rooms, a kitchen, and a dining room. She was installed as his permanent "quote unquote" housekeeper. Oh my God! Installed. <laughs> he painted the car maroon, and in big letters, a foot high each, he wrote "Mabel" on it. Wow. His mom was not amused by his love. She called her for the rest of her life. She'd call her Miss Harlot. Ah. But his mom also recognized that if uh, if he was smart. This woman would not take his money. Yes. And he, she, he, his mother trusted Mabel more than she would have, she trusted any other rich family in the country. 
Mm. Really? Yes. Why would she trust her? I'm not entirely sure. I think it's because... She uh, trusted him? Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, All right. I like okay. this. This is going weird places. Yeah, let's see where this fails. <laughs> <laughs> so the town of Terrell was a little too sleepy for this. They were not amused. So he sent Mabel to Dallas, and then he started moving. He went go, would go to Dallas and spend more time with her in Dallas. And then he figured, what the hell, I'm in Dallas. He became the hottest thing in Dallas. He would have parties all the time. And there's an anecdote where uh, he had so many cork legs that he would have a party and he would be tired of one cork leg. So he'd take it off. He put another one on. That's and they said you could find out where he was based on the trail of cork trail legs. Trail of legs, of course. Yes. Uh, very... Yeah. Follow the legs. <laughs> That's brilliant. Follow the legs. Check it out now. It's like I'm a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to bounce on this leg and jump into the pool. What a weirdo I am. <laughs> I mean, presumably he had to take his pants off to do it every time, too. Wow. That is wonderful. But That's completely This insane. is my party leg. This is my business leg. <laughs> uh, 1899, he's uh, late 20s now, uh, early 30s. He brings the first ever automobile to Dallas. Oh, what year? 1899. Very nice Mercedes Benz. Uh, no, it was a St. Louis uh, model. It was the, the, there's a company, St. Louis, where there's a car manufacturer mm -hmm. brought one of their models there. He also got in the first automobile accident there. When yeah. a, a wagon uh, drove him off the road. A wagon. A wagon. Wow. Drove him off the road. He also placed the first ever order with the Wright brothers for a plane. Huh. Jesus Christ. And he promised Dallas that they would see it in a year for the state fair. When the plane didn't arrive in time, he, he instead bought a dirigible and flew that there instead. All right. Hey. Wow. Well, the State Fair in Dallas. A dirigible. And a dirigible. Was that a Zeppelin? Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. He bought that. And it's a blimp. Does he, does he, he flies it personally? No. No. He bought okay. he ride in it. Okay. He fucked Mabel in it. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, he wrote Mabel all over the blimp. Sperm. <laughs> Whale sperm. <laughs> sperm. Uh, now, around this time, uh, there was uh, this, politi this upcoming polit upstart politician in Dallas who his platform was he wanted to rid Dallas of the unsavory characters. And so in this moment, the colonel, he decided it's time for him to get into politics. And so he met with this local politician named Gooseneck Bill McDonald. Good old Gooseneck. Jesus. Apparently he had a long neck. Ah. Long neck, cork leg. Now, Gooseneck Bill was black. He was uh, one of the first black politicians in, in Texas. And this is 1900 now? 1899. Still 1899. Mm -hmm. So we're only 30 years removed from the Civil War. Mm -hmm. In Texas. In Texas. But the, the Republic of Texas. Right. You know, it's got its own kind of way of doing things. Two little things a little different around here. Yeah, they got a dirigible. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, a colored mayor. Yeah. What do you mean colored? Uh, first thing I noticed was his neck that went all for it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice the fellow was a black one. I noticed that he had a freakishly long neck. Yeah, so I hated him for that reason. <laughs> and also because he was black. <laughs> yeah, I remember in Texas, uh, you know, uh, they seceded from Mexico uh, to, in order to keep slaves. Yes, yes. Uh, but, you know, this is 1899. They're, you know, they're very progressive. Uh, but, but Dallas also had a large black section, and, and that's where Ned uh, got plenty of his power and his voting block. Huh. And so uh, McDonald, he, he, uh, he told Ned, he said... Uh, Give me $25,000, and I'll make sure I am re-elected, uh, or, or the, the, may, the incumbent mayor is re-elected, so this new guy doesn't kick out mm -hmm. any of the uh, uh, um, unsavory characters. Mm -hmm. right. McDonald was a, legislature, a le legislator for the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about uh, $700,000 today. Mm -hmm. uh, 70000 700000 So Ned went to the bank, he took out that twenty five k at the time, <sighs> handed it straight on over. Bill McDonald went through all of the black areas and just handed it out. Oh, oh to, to vote go buying. vote to get in. The mayor got reelected. Just so why votes. why do you not want to get rid of the unsavory characters? Because because he was one of the unsavory Ned characters. Is, Ned is one of them. Ned yeah. is one of them. So I'm greasing the politician right. to buy votes so that the new guy doesn't win, so that I can stay here with my blimp and, and my prostitute. whores. Yeah, yeah, my whore blimp. <laughs> yeah. All right, I like it. My floating whore fuckhouse. And Ned recognized uh, an opportunity here, so he started becoming more involved in politics, and he was elected uh, with his connections to the Republican State Commission in 1898, yeah. and he became a national delegate for the Republican Party in 1900 after showing up at all of their meetings and flooding the meetings with booze and women. <sighs> wow. 
And no one would be appointed a political office in Texas without his say so, as long as there's a Republican in the White House. Jesus. And uh, Gooseneck Bill, through this, he made about $100,000 in kickbacks during that time. Oh my God. So much money. Take your money, put it into politics. Wow. So and, now, and now is his mom also like on board with all of these maneuverings? She doesn't care. Okay. Where is she at? She's in New York City right now. Bitch. And uh, he... <laughs> Living in a one-bedroom flat. <laughs> yeah. Above yeah. a greasy spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Moving to New Jersey. Living in a cardboard box. <laughs> yeah. I'm Cooking grilled cheese on the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> I want a mini cut. I compromised. I had a grilled cheese on the radiator. So now he was, he was getting involved uh, in everything. Through the politics, he was getting involved in everything in Dallas. 1905, he's the director of 27 different companies. Jesus. Uh, after there was a bull, the bull weevil uh, problem in, in, in Texas, and it killed the cotton crop, he had one of his companies develop a stronger cotton crop mm -hmm. to, to not have to deal with bull weevils. He owned 27 acres of greenhouses for flowers, employing 400 workers and churn, churning out 300,000 flowers a day. What a lovely, lovely enterprise. Yeah, all delivered to Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when Teddy Roosevelt showed up in Dallas, Ned catered the whole thing. Really? Mm hmm Wow. In 1905, he sponsored the first ever 100-mile car race. Wow. Jeez, would it take three weeks? <laughs> yeah, it probably did. 1906, he was 38. He was nominated for Texas governor. And now Hetty stepped in. She said, knock it off. You have a business to run. Yeah. You're running my business. You're not going to be governor. There's no mm. money in governing. So he was bored. So you know what he did? He... He bought a private train car, and he hitched it to the Ringling Brothers, and he toured with them around the country, going to every show. Wow, just as a fan? Just as a fan. What a loser. What? Where's the money in that? Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't need it. He's, he's got all these businesses with the money coming in. He doesn't need it. So he can't govern the state of Texas, but he can go to the circus and follow around a bunch of fucking jugglers? Yes. Well, the problem is, if he gets into politics, suddenly... All of the, all of the business uh, is going to get looked into, right. and his mother that affects his mother. And he was very close to his mother. Here's a letter that he wrote to her when he was 25, right after he had been appointed to the Texas Railroad. This is a real letter he wrote to her: "Dear Mama, I am 25 years old today. I think you might send me money so I could go to the fair at Chicago in about two weeks before the fall rush comes. It only costs about $200. I can get passes to Chicago in return. Let me know as soon as you can so I can get ready." I want to see the fair so bad. Please let me go. Your affectionate son, Ned. What a bitch. <laughs> wow. She caused him his leg and he still loved her. Oh my God. Please send me money. I'm 25. Yes. That'll only be $200. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the fair, Mama. Yes. Wow. I mean, that's cute. I guess. I mean, I guess, like, fuck, she must have done something to make him love her. You, a you, you could have spent $45 10 years ago and saved my <laughs> leg, but I'll gladly take 200 now and no. in recompense. Yes. Hopefully the cork leg won't get caught in the Ferris wheel. <laughs> 1910, Hetty is, uh, she, she's dying. She gets, she's getting sick. There's a story of her. She goes to her doctor, uh, and her doctor goes, this doctor goes to treat her, and he's saying, what, what's with this stick? In your underpants. She has this, this, this stick in her underpants. It's a shiv. It's Back my, off. It's my cock. <laughs> and <laughs> what it was is she had a hernia, and she was using the stick to hold the hernia in place. Perfect. Oh. Perfect. Stick's free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the doctor normally charged 50 cents, but for this disgusting act, he charged her $1.50, and she yelled at him and called him the devil. Well, it's about 50. It's... 1960, she had a stroke while haranguing a housekeeper who she thought was buying the more expensive milk. Oh, wow. my God. I mean, for that housekeeper, that must have been amazing. Um, incredible, yeah. Uh, Ned showed up to take care of her, and he had all of the nurses dress as uh, maids so uh, she wouldn't think he was spending too much money on her. <sighs> oh, my God. He knows her. He knows his he mom. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to just clean up uh, this... Uh... You know, dust and um, give you this transfusion. Okay. <laughs> it's no problem at all. It's, it's, it's not at all. It's yeah. part of just tidying up. Yeah, don't worry about it. Got a stick. Yeah. A Her stick. This is my father's hernia stick. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, man. That is brutal. <laughs> Shortly after this, she would die. 
She'd be buried in Bellows Falls in the family plot in Vermont. Next to the lake. Next to the lake. Wow. Uh huh. Uh, she left Ned and his sister. Uh, she would, her sister would be known by as Sylvia at that time. She is very boring. Uh, <laughs> she left Ned and his sister seventy five million each. That's approximately two billion dollars today. Oh, oh my shit. god! And Ned was already one of the richest men in Texas. Yeah, there's another two billion. Oh my god! God, she didn't leave anything to charity. No, not like no. the Vanderbilt or the Rockefellers. That's one of the reasons why we we remember them. Right. Right. Yes. And Anderson Cooper. <laughs> yeah. That is, um... I mean, you could leave so little and it would be so much. Yep. So the sister was boring, but she's now got two bill. Yes, and the sister also married uh, the great-grandson uh, to the Astors, the first millionaires uh, oh. in the country. Wow. So this, it was just money upon money. So one of their kids probably died on the Titanic, right? <laughs> we can hope. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. That's crazy. So as soon as she died, Ned married Mabel. Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Sucks a mean one. <laughs> they moved to Round Hill, Massachusetts, where he built an expansive area, a farm uh, he, with, with an airstrip and uh, the first, uh, one of the first radio towers. And huh. to celebrate his marriage, he decided he wanted to buy the world's largest yacht. Okay. But uh, I think it was Vanderbilt who owned it. He wouldn't sell it to him. Ah. So instead, Ned stole bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, instead he bought a steamer from the U.S. government and then added 61 feet to it to make it the largest yacht in the country. Oh wow. my God! Brilliant! It burned two tons of coal a day. Oh Lord! Oh. It had. It had. Uh, How the, could you even be on board that and not die? <laughs> it burned two tons of coal a day for the hot water. For the fireplaces, it had the main room was 30 feet by 30 feet with a giant fireplace in it. And the problem was... More smoke. Well, at least he wasn't cheap and he ran the hot water. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, he learned from his mother yeah, to yeah. not be the miser. Good for him. But this was during wartime. And he realized he couldn't get all the coal, so he stripped the ship and he sank it in the harbor in Round Hill. He claimed, uh. claimed an insurance policy on it? <laughs> Probably did. Yeah. This mansion at Fucking Kaiser. <laughs> uh, son of a bitch got all the way to the Ohio River. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what he did at Round Hill is he got in to all the stuff he had ever wanted to get into. He finally had a, 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 his own area, his own house. Legs. <laughs> he got into legs. Got into legs. <laughs> in his mansion at Round Hill, he boasted the world's second finest stamp collection. Only the only uh, larger stamp collector was King George V. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Get, get a hobby. Oh, that's one. That's one. That is not a hobby. Well, it's, I think it's one of the most famous hobbies. What are you talking about? You're right. But <laughs> check out my stamps. Yeah. What else is going on back then? Mm -hmm. well, there's nothing else to collect. Chips. There's not any comic books or like anything. Collect chips, sure. But I mean, you got no fucking coal to run them. Yeah, you sink them. Yeah, come up with some stamps. I don't know. Stamp stamps. it out. He, uh, he, had a, he had an entire sheet of 100 inverted Jenny stamps. These are one of the most famous stamps ever made. There's a plane on it, and the plane is upside down. It was oh, yeah. printed incorrectly. One of those stamps today would sell for $1 million. Oh, Someone said, hey, you should split those. Instead of keeping one sheet, break them up. So he broke them up, and he put one of them in, the, in, in, a, Mabel, or in a locket and gave it to Mabel. She ah. Would, Wary, she would wear a hundred a million, or basically a million dollars around her neck every day. Jesus. He also owned the world's largest coin collection. Including... That's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Including all five. He is one of the few people to ever own all five of the 1913 Liberty Nickels. Huh. Uh, huh. In 2010, one of these, just one of these was sold for $4 million. Good God. His house also featured a circus, one of the first ever radio towers, WAMF. He was fascinated with the radio. He would hold concerts in town. His house featured a circus and a radio tower. He had this giant acreage. He oh had it. He had an air airport. When Charles Lindbergh's baby was uh, uh, kidnapped, Charles Lindbergh landed his plane there uh, to go said, do research. Do you have my baby? <laughs> you have my baby? <laughs> Are you collecting babies? <laughs> you know how much a Lindbergh baby goes for these days. <laughs> as much as an inverted Jenny stamp. His house also featured a Goodyear blimp that he kept tied to a tree. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what? Did it say Ice Cube's a pimp? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's tied to a fucking tree? Yeah, you don't want it to go anywhere. And that it's... works? Yeah. It, might, it might float away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! It's a dirigible. It's a dirigible. So what do you- It's very what... able to be dirigged. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Just pull on the rope from the tree to bring it back down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can huff the helium, the uh, hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, he would have his housekeepers take care of that. Wow. Uh, he donated to MIT to fund their radio department. He basically got the radio department started. He donated yeah. the blimp. <laughs> no, he totally. He donated money and, oh, okay. and the use of the radio tower to mm -hmm. MIT. Very good, very good. Um, and and they were they were able to use the radio ta tower to keep track of polar expedition expeditions and the first ever transatlantic flight by a zeppelin. He would spend three million dollars a year on stamps, coins, women. And pornography. Oh, now we're now talking. Now that's a hobby. Let's talk about he it. He had one of the largest porn collections in the history of the world, especially then. Yeah. And in the great hall of his mansion hung a giant whale penis. Wow. Sperm. Right. Wow. It's a dork. Yeah. A whale penis is a dork. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's hey, a piece to talk about. It's full circle. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, especially you know, someone had to cut the penis off and right. bring it back to him. Yeah. Here you go, boss. Guess you're into this. Let's put it on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Spit shine just like you asked, boss. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Took a while to get it going. <laughs> Anything else, boss? <laughs> it spits if you rub it. Oh my god. Jeez, what a lunatic. It's just a Canadian oil. It's uncut. So do you know anything about... <laughs> do you know anything about the porn? No. I'm so disappointed. I could not find anything about his porn collection. Damn it. It was probably like hand-drawn. Yeah. I mean, it was probably like pictures. Civil War letters. Also, yes. listen to our Patreon if you want to hear about some filthy Civil War letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, uh daguerreotypes. You know, a lot of those things are just, you know, those black and white pictures of some woman with, like, frilly dress, like, sitting on a, 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 a Lazy Susan or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lazy Susan. Yeah, holding on her around. petticoat <laughs> to expose yeah. a boosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Along with the radio testing while he was there, they, uh, uh, Dr. Robert Vandegraaff and MIT put the first ever Vandegraaff generator there mm. uh, using two polished aluminum spheres, each 15 feet in diameter, mounted on 25-foot columns. Uh, and the columns were mount mounted on railroad, or railroad trucks. Mm -hmm. And the, the, they stood 43 feet above the ground and would shoot 7,000 uh, uh, bolts of lightning from them at immense power. They, people would just come in from town and just watch it fire. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's kind of like a Tesla coil type of thing. Huh. It, uh, it's a novelty. Oh, it's shooting lightning. Hell yeah, it's a fucking novelty. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like porn. I, <laughs> he was very generous with his money. Uh, he, he had the, the, one of the first electric cars in the United States. He would drive it down to Florida. At every traffic stop, he would hand the uh, police officer a $20 coin. Wow. He would drive all the way down to Florida to do that, and then do the same thing when he drove all the way back. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Uh, he would carry an insane amount of cash with him. At the time, they had denominations of $10,000. Really? And uh, this would be before we just settled on the 100. Yeah. At one point, he was having breakfast with a friend of his uh, who owned the uh, Security National Bank. He was having breakfast with a man, and the man's servant came in and said, Sir, there's been a run on your bank. And so Ned said, Well, how much do you need? And he took out $100,000 from his pocket, counted it out, handed it over, told the servant to go up to his room, where he had a briefcase full of cash, brought that down, and handed over another $400,000 to the man. Good God. And the man's bank stayed afloat. When you say there was a run on the bank, people were withdrawing Withdrawing deposits. money. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. he added $500,000 immediately to the bank to keep it afloat. Jesus. Just because he was could having... He, just could have used the cork leg <laughs> to keep it afloat. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> so many. Yeah, there's so many. It's like leopard print cork leg. <laughs> this is my fancy leg. <laughs> this is my army leg. Just because he was friends with the guy, that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, because he was friends with the guy, and also he didn't want to interrupt the breakfast. Yeah, yeah he's eating. Go get, go get my money while I finish well, my. Well, uh, how much Benedict. is it? I, like, what are you doing here? What? Okay, fine. Why did you bring enough to buy a bank? 
to breakfast. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah, you never know. That might even run on the well, bank. Some and... of it was in the room. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, he only had a hundred grand in his pocket. <sighs> He's the colonel. He's the colonel. He is the colonel. The colonel. Uh, he didn't have any kids. And in, eight, in 1936, uh, he was in his uh, uh, mid 60s. He uh, had heart disease and he died of heart disease. And Mabel's around the whole time. Mabel's around the entire time. Is she barren or is he. He barren. I, you know, it. Well, he's a baron. I but... mean, but he's having sex with so many people. Like, who knows? Right. Mm-hmm. Was he fucking a lot of. Yes. Yes. Good, good for him. Now, uh, good for her. He dies, and his final request is that they dig up his leg and they bury it with him in Massachusetts. What the okay. fuck? So he's finally reunited with his, his lost long. leg. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And there was a, a jealous stable of cork legs at the funeral. <laughs> yes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Give him, some, give him the best years of my life. Yeah. So now he, uh, um, his sister, uh, uh, Sylvia and Mabel, they fought over the estate. At the time, it was, it was valued at $44 million. At the time. Oh my God! And, uh, uh, so he blew 75? Yeah. <sighs> he was given 75. Right, yeah. But I mean. By the time he died. You know, airstrip, yeah. dirigible. Sure, all, sure, All sure. the cops at the traffic stops. <laughs> hot, wa- hot water, good milk. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. The best. The best milk. So, uh, um. <laughs> uh, he had persuaded Mabel to sign a prenup. Uh, but she would get, uh, they, over court, this, over the, the court case, this came out. Mabel would get about 1500 a month for the rest of her life. Um, and then she also settled for $500,000, and his sister would get the rest. Okay, the boring lady? Yes. And then, uh, four states, Texas, Massachusetts, Florida, New York, they all fought over who would collect the $6 million in inheritance taxes. Uh-huh. $6 million in inheritance at the time. Massachusetts got it. No word on who got the giant whale penis, though. Couldn't find it. Ah! Yeah, I mean, it's buried, gotta be. Buried with his mom. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. She loved it. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, Sylvia, uh, she lived a rather boring life. Um, she was barren, and uh, she she died in 1951 at age 80. And her will divided her money up again amongst friends, relatives, and institutions. Wow. Huh. And the heady the heady green family money was forever out of the family. Wow. Good. Good. Wow. That's. Great. That was yeah. a hell of a story. Yeah. That's really wild. Um I love airstrips. I love dirigibles. Yeah, and... I mean, you know, like I mean, fucking Jesus, like you're finally out from under your mom who's a psycho. Yeah, and spend you just, that shit. You just go nuts. Yeah. yeah. Like uh just... I couldn't go to the circus, so now I'm gonna have one. <laughs> yeah. My house. With a fucking Zeppelin. Tied to a tree. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, in my library, I got a whale dick. That is fucking in- insane. Like, and do you know anything more about the sister? Like, was she doing anything interesting, or was she just like sitting there with a bunch of money? And then it was like, I'm going to give it to all these socialite people. Yeah, I mean that was basically it. She married. She she had money. She married into money. Yeah. It sounds like she didn't do anything. She didn't have any kids. Yeah. And so it. Yeah. It. And never it, succumbed to the pressure of the, uh, you know, the philanthropy culture of the time of like, hey, you know, we're like the richest families in the country and these people have nothing. And yeah. we have to at least look like we're doing something for them so they don't come kill us. Right. Right. And she's just like, no, we don't. They're not coming to Texas. Yeah. I've yeah. got a gun. I bought all the real. <laughs> I've got a gun strapped to the hotel door. Yeah. And I got this hernia stick. <laughs> <laughs> you got to fight up the stick first. That is wild. Yeah, it, it's wonderful. one of the, like, you know, I, wonderful. I, I read, the book I found just had Hetty in it, and I was like, okay, well, you know, she's like a fucking asshole, it's, you know, I, I can, that's a good 20, 20 minute story, I guess, you can talk about what a fucking asshole she is. Right, right, but then the son is- Then the is, son is the most amazing character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, gets involved with a black politician, he loves uh, automobiles, he, he brings these prostitutes uh, through Texas, you know? All of these, yeah. like, ship them in. And it's funny that he, he, he doesn't have kids. I mean, he never... Right. You know, for well, all maybe the Maybe he was barren, too. His sister, him. 
all that you know malnutrition and cold weather <laughs> the kid yeah. probably stunted their reproductive organs yeah, yeah. And probably you think like you you know i don't want i don't want to torture my kid the way my mother tortured me sure yeah you know that'll put you off that forever but fuck man what a great great story but also you know you get involved with mit he's very yeah. he's very yeah. generous for such an eccentric person yeah. and uh i mean mit's radio department has him and basically only him to thank he gave him so much money he, gave, he let him use the tower yeah wow. and then you know it, it was, he was famous throughout the throughout that city you know he would hold concerts there and uh you know the whole town would show up and, and really uh, yeah uh, wow. he, he bought he bought this old whaling ship that that belonged to his his grandfather and though it ran th ran through the family he gave it to uh, uh, I believe it's at uh, one of the maritime uh, museums in Massachusetts now huh wow. didn't sink it didn't sink that one good the whaling thing is insane to me too it's like I, at this time I, I can't even believe that people can do anything let alone take on whaling yeah you know what I mean oh this is all I mean it was what eighteen 90s 18 well their family started in the 1600s right right, right. right. Well, 18, they need 18, to, you, listen you gotta light your can't you gotta like have lighting yeah i mean back then it was it was fucking candles yeah that was right. it and that was a revelation compared to what they had before which was nothing <laughs> other than like a hearth <laughs> yeah yeah a yeah fire a fire yeah jesus man yeah. wits yeah huh. i mean just like you know it, uh, one of the old connections episodes talks about how important the fireplace was mm -hmm. yeah and not uh, and and a uh, chimney yeah because once you had a chimney the smoke could go somewhere yeah yeah and then once the smoke goes somewhere you can have rooms yeah because you don't all have to crowd around the fire right 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 yeah and then once you have and rooms, to death yeah, yeah you can have once, privacy you have privacy and once you have privacy then rich people separate themselves from the poor people and then you can get perverted. Yes. Uh, yeah, or even or even uh, the idea of uh, children separating from parents. Yes. Yep. Was you know like a novel thing, and uh, I think one of the things I'm, I'm I'm fascinated with by by this episode is the idea of his wielding of political power at the time. Yes. Mm. Uh, Literally buying votes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, not even buying, just like people giving you shit. It's like the thing of like you're so rich. Here's you're a colonel now. And, and right, yes, yeah, and like you know, um, you know, what did what did guys like Teddy Roosevelt think of these guys? Like, did was that the deal back then? Is that you went from state to state and just met guys like this? Uh -huh. I mean, I mean, and that's, had, what, that's had, what they do now. Had, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, it's still the same. That's so insane. It's just so much more blatant, I guess, in this story. You know? Yeah, but it's like you know, if, uh, when He's made a delegate. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's not what, even from there. Yeah, but that's what I mean. We do that now. Anytime a politician comes to California to raise money, who do they, where do they go? They go to some house in Beverly Hills where they talk to twenty people who are all multi yeah. multi millionaires. Yeah, you go to George Clooney's place, right? Fifteen hundred dollars a plate dinner. Yeah, but it's also his mother being like, "You're not running for fucking governor." Yeah, we don't want we don't want that perversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, what was he going to do as governor? Be like, every day is illegal. Day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Prefer parking for cork legs. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and that part always blows my fucking mind. Like, she basically like he was never the same after that, but it never mattered, and he never never held it against her. Dude, yeah, that, number, seventy five million dollars a lot. Of yeah, it was, it was, what yeah, happened to the dad? Uh, he died, uh, before Hetty did. Destitute. Not destitute, no, no, she actually, like, she, you know, she tried to take care of him when he was dying. Oh, yeah, with a stick? Yeah, with liver pills. She beat him. Oh, um, my God, what? Well, one of the reasons she kicked him out of the house the is because, wraps. because the bank she was a member of, the bank was running out of money, and they said it was because of him, because he owed them a shit ton of money, because they were like, well, well hetty has got a bunch of money, so we can keep loaning him money. He was oh. just not a good businessman. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so she wouldn't loan, she wouldn't ever give him money after, after his first mistake. Mm. Wow. And so, like, it's not like he was ever poor, poor. Yeah. Um, and hopefully he had some, you know, whores to sleep with. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, it's dirigible. It's, the, yeah. yeah. Tied to a tree. <laughs> Just simple pleasures. I'm a simple plan. <laughs> simple things. Fuck, man. That's I want so a, insane. A whore train with my girl's name painted on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
A whale dick and a blimp tied to a tree. Simple. What else do yeah. you need? I'm simple man. Simple man. <laughs> simple man. Call me crazy. Simple <laughs> Call me pervert. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I enjoy. It's just me. Fuck man. Uh, like and 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 that, and that was the colonel. <laughs> that was. It was the colonel. The uh the whale penis was it? Was it hanging above the room? No, it was it suspended no, it would by be, wire it would be on the wall. It was like it was on the mounted, wall. Mounted okay, on yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah, bet it was. Yeah. <laughs> What a conversation. And I, you know, I don't know what whale, because, uh, you know, the blue whale, the gray blue 100 foot whale has the biggest penis, biggest penis of all. So maybe you all the animals. Huh. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. like a 10 foot But is penis. that among growers or showers? Well, I don't know if they, I don't know how whales. The water is cold, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't just start making crazy claims, Matt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's done the science on growers versus showers. Nobody True. has. I, I'm, I've dabbled. You have? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You've gone whale to whale? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, they must be growers, because you don't want a plankton all over that thing. No. Nah. Yeah, it, it fucks up with your uh, hi- hydrodynamics. Yeah, yeah. Right. All of a sudden, you're spinning. Yeah, you're yeah, caught yeah, on a, a coral it's a, it's reef a or something. <laughs> your big, giant dick rudder you know, making you go sideways. Sick pack of rings on it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you get a soda can ring on <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's a license plate caught in it again. <laughs> cut it off, cut it off. <laughs> so they can ring. Imagine, imagine being that that scientist diver has to go down and cut the ring off the mm, penis. Oh yeah. god. That's a tough day. That's a that's a really tough day. And Dolphin's like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, I got you now. Jesus oh. Christ. Matt, that was absolutely fantastic. Thanks. I loved that story. Um, Thank you. I think I, 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 I would like to know more about the the old rich. I think we should do more of that on this show. Yeah, I mean they had they had the luxury of being able to be eccentric, and no, yes. there was no checks or balances on their eccentricity. No, there was no government restriction at all on yeah. what they could do. I mean, no fucking inheritance tax. Yep. Jesus Christ! And you could just you know, at news traveled so slow, so you could be in the middle of nowhere texas or the woods or whatever nobody would know no not what forever you're not for years Anybody? yeah and if yeah. you went there and you're like yeah he's got a circus at his house and a zeppelin tied up to a tree you're like fuck you idiot i don't believe a you whale penis dude whales don't exist yeah <laughs> <laughs> whales are a myth yeah well yeah i mean that a dragon the, sea dragons those are real <laughs> yeah, sea dragon penis. i mean that whole um i I have, I have a profile coming up in a couple of weeks um that will involve Cornelius Vanderbilt, Ooh. and though the robber, the Barrett, like that Baron mm. era, is just fucking insane. I mean, the United States in that time, yeah, the United States, that in gilded 1800s, age, robber Baron age, the, which were the eighteen hundred yeah. United States is huckster central. Mm. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it is the the new country. If you want to make money, you can find a way to cheat people out of their money, whoever they are, any yeah. way you can. It's the if it. Europe, because Europe had gone through all these stages, and they were largely settled by this time. But it was all the new world. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the, the thing of you know the the Ringling quote: "The sucker's born every minute." Was almost like the mantra of the country. Yeah, yep. you know, it was like you know, a fool and his money are soon parted. Like that was the whole deal going yeah. on from top to bottom. Yep. And like it was just, I mean, I guess after what the the stock market crash that that started being kind of like corrected and like well the great depression yeah Yeah. that's when it really started that affected yeah the the poor people in a a much different way yeah and now it was i think that kind of thing of like what do we do to stop these people from killing us we have all this (laughs) yeah this shit there's an elephant in my backyard (laughs) these people should be murdering me yeah um but yeah it's it 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 is definitely uh the the height of of eccentricity when you were that unchecked and you become as weird as you wanted to yeah Mm -hmm. Leaving a litter of legs in your wake at a party. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, how many more were there to go? How many legs were on deck? Yeah, you can see how cool the party was by how many legs were. <laughs> oh, he, he, he broke out the safari leg. <laughs> Must have been a hell of a party. <laughs> yeah, he's got the, the zebra fucking yeah. fur leg. Yeah, zebra. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call it there. That was great. That was excellent, thank Matt. You thank, you. thank you. Thank you for listening, uh, Thank you everybody. guys for listening. Uh, we love you. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Matt Brousseau. Good night, everybody. Good night.